Hello everybody, and we're here on a little mini edition of Forever Wild. This is William Justin Johnson, and I'm Ben Abercrombie. Glad to see you today. Uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about something that's very unique. This is a cool winter day we have today. It's in uh, the mid to late November. It's just a beautiful day to be inside. And we're going to talk a little bit about some of the conversations that we have while people are not at play card and ways that uh, people can professionally develop, uh, ways that we can see vision and leadership develop, do a lot of conversations with that. So uh, without further ado, I want to be asking William Johnson some questions about that. And that way you guys in the audience can understand some perspective on, on how you can talk strategy with your team, what, uh, what is important about leadership, and just how to connect with your community. So William, you have been here how long? How long, New Year's, have you been working with us? I've been doing work for here uh, for the better part of about five or six years. Um, everything from the astronomy program to primitive survival mm -hmm. and the general education programming um, here at the center. Fantastic. And what are the what are four or five top lessons you've learned from your interaction with kids once you started play card? What are some things that you have learned that have been stepping stones for you in your thought process? Uh, the biggest things are learning how to be independent, mm -hmm. learning how to be curious, uh, vision focused. So you should have your own unique uh, flavor that you bring to any organization. Um, it's often said, and I'm going to sidetrack here, that your superpower is knowing who you are. You know, discovering who you are, your passions, and your focuses. Uh, beyond that, uh, being studious, so making sure that you're reading, staying up to date, staying current. Uh, and the last one is fun and enjoyment. So enjoying what you do, uh, again, finding that your unique passion so that way you're happy in whichever uh, area that's your place. Okay, good. So having fun, that's definitely an important part mm -hmm. of it. Okay. Now you're talking about reading, okay? What is important about reading? That was very key to you because you read all the time. Mm -hmm. And there's some strategy you use to read different subjects. And it's really fascinating to see how much you can absorb knowledge in different things. And I think a lot of students out there can do that as well. So what are some patterns and thought processes you go through to be able to figure out what you want to read next, what you want to learn next, be a lifelong learner? What do you do? Um, so again, you, you want to pick a, a general direction. Mm -hmm. um, you want to have an idea of where you want to go in life. You, that can help you fabricate or create a list of books that you start off with. You know, they have great suggestions on YouTube. So let's say you're interested in science. Go, go on YouTube and type in the top 10 science books. And then there'll be some person on there talking, talking and telling you why those are the 10 great science books. From there, science books often reference other science books. And oftentimes, that's where you can get your information from. So you're reading through and it says, hey, you should read Life Stories by David Attenborough. This is where I reference this from. So after you get done with that book, you go pick up David Attenborough's book. And then it really turns into a cascade of uh, very, very good information. Um, and another thing is once you pick that direction, you're gonna know what job you wanna work. At that job, they're gonna have different job requirements. So some being leadership, some being budget, management, etc. Then I would kind of branch out and see uh, what books would be beneficial for you to make you really competitive to get that job. Get that job, okay. Mm -hmm. Now, speaking about competitive, okay, we're in a job market that's very competitive. Anything in the outdoor fields, in the research fields, biology, science-based fields, is an extraordinarily competitive field. What are a couple of tips that you can give to people to start out from a young age, from a very young age, to get to where you are today and your progress and your, um, on your, on your life journey toward your goals, what would you give advice to a young person? Um, you just gotta be hungry. You really have to, you really have to want to be good at what you're doing. You, you have to say, you know, I wanna be the best, just because you're gonna impact someone in a unique way. Mm -hmm. And I'll kind of bridge back to a life-changing moment was that I went to this speech a long time ago at Coastal Carolina, and it was talking about Dr. Martin Luther King. And the guy goes up there, it's, he tells like a 30 minute story, but it's the best story I've ever heard. He says, uh, or he starts his presentation, Dr. Martin Luther King wasn't a dreamer. Mm -hmm. And then he tells this story. He talks about track, he talks about sports, and, and you know, you, we get to this point, where are you going with this, you know? And then when he gets to the end, he says, a person who works for a bank, they interpret someone's dreams of having good finances. Mm -hmm. An educator interprets someone's dreams of having an education. A person who has, does science and per, interprets someone's dreams of, you know, maybe having good health or a healthy environment, 
etc. So Dr. Martin Luther King wasn't a dreamer, he was an interpreter of dreams. And so no matter what, the, uh, what you choose to pursue, that's your focus. You know, you want to be an interpreter of dreams and you want to gear yourself to be the utmost in your field. And you know, there's an, another small statistic that um, if you read, uh, I think it was 10 books a year, you'll be one of the top most experts in your field if it pertains to that, that field. That's how little Americans read. Wow. So just 10 bucks a year puts you in the top 5%. Yeah, in, in, wow. your, in, your, specific, in your specific area of expertise, because people just, they don't read. All the secrets are in a book. Wow. Mm -hmm. So it's not on the internet, it's not on a blog or a YouTube video or something like that. You're saying reading is the key, actually physically getting into a full story and reading. Reading is key because of uh, attention spans. Right. right. So you have people who, it's I not to say people, but generally speaking, you have individuals who spend a lot of time watching those videos, watching those short clips and this and that. And it's very informational and it's great, but the, the ability to process that information and slow down actually not only makes you a better reader, makes you a better typer too, I'll get into that later, but it makes you a better listener because mm -hmm. you have the ability to do things slow you have the ability to read and digest things. And once you get to the corporate or professional world, reading has not been cycled out. You know, you have to do a lot of things with law and policy mm -hmm. uh, and standards, and there's no YouTube app for that for those companies. So they, don't, they don't release that information, so you gotta be good at reading and disseminating information. Okay, good. Now you, um, he's, he's actually helped me onto a new device, talking about apps and everything. Mm -hmm. That's kind of the old fashioned way, is reading your way through the world and all that. But there is a new generation, and it seems like the, it's been a, a, a described as this new generation is kind of scuba diving, instead of scuba diving into the information and swimming through the sea of information like the previous generation did with books and longer, um, I, I guess, longer reading topics, that with the day, age of the internet, the way we think is we're actually, scuba, we're actually jet skiing across the top of the information. So we hit the highlights of a lot of different information, but we don't ever really dig very deeply. So reading, seems to be a way to dig deeper through the surface of the information from just a YouTube, YouTube search or a Google search or something like that mm -hmm. to, uh, to get to the depth of an issue, okay? Uh, but it's expensive, it's expensive out there. Honestly, not everybody can go out there and always go to have access to books. So what is a couple of modern techniques that you use to be able to, and you're helping me with some of these modern techniques, to be able to learn about this information? What's a couple of modern things that say an older person would look at to learn like a newer person is today? What are some of the things that they're doing? Uh, so the biggest, the biggest thing I would recommend is interactive reading. Mm -hmm. um, just to kind of touch on, touch on how you kind of dive in more into information. So as you're reading, at the end of each question, if you're reading a business book, you know, focus on maybe two businesses and how those business models may have been influenced by something that you read in that chapter. So something along, that, along the lines of that can help you digest it. Mm -hmm. Now, as far as getting material, People, people just don't have public library cards anymore. You, you would be amazed at the awesome resources that the libraries have these days, and people um, could really take advantage of you know your public library cards. Mm -hmm. Beyond that, there are audiobooks uh, and audiobook sources. I personally use Audible. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I love Audible. If it wasn't for Audible, I would read maybe half the books that I do a year, just simply because I spend two hours in the car a day. Right, so that uh, contributes a lot to, to uh, just kind of my overall reading. That's what I would suggest to anyone who is older, trying to get back into reading. The last thing I would suggest is there's uh, kind of a dichotomy. You have this casual reading over here, and then you have more you know, integrative, you know, deep thinking reading that you have to slow down and read a little bit slower. There are some books I can read, if they're 200 pages, I can read it in two hours. Right. There are some books that are 200 pages. If it's heavy business or heavy science, it'll take three and a half. Right. So knowing what speeds and what comprehension rates that you need for different literature, um, and starting off more casual, mm -hmm. and then progressing to more integrative professional. How do you know your reading speeds and all that? How would you assess that? So the the most up to date way to measure reading speed is to pair it with comprehension. Mm -hmm. What you do is you, you read a passage, you, there are usually, there are several websites that do this. They have a start-stop button. 
and you read um, from start to stop, digital reading is different than page reading. So uh, digitally, you read slower um, than you do if it was on paper, right? Mm -hmm. But nonetheless, you, you do your words per minute, then you do your comprehension. So let's say Sally Sue would have 100 words per minute at 60 or 70% comprehension. 100 words per minute is pretty slow, but 60 or 70% comprehension is really high. Right. Um, the last time I did it, I did right around 300 words per minute, mm -hmm. just over 300 words per minute, uh, with about 60% comprehension. Oh, that's right. good. So mm -hmm. you're, you're getting a very high amount of words, word volume mm -hmm. going through there. And that just comes with reading. They, people want to know what's the secret to speed reading? How do you read more? How do you read faster? You gotta read. Just gotta read. Just gotta read. You gotta practice. Like anything mm -hmm. else, practice makes perfect. You just exactly. Gotta, like, um, in that way, your, your mind is elastic. It's a lot more like a muscle than people realize that you mm -hmm. can train to do new things. And no matter how old you are, you can always learn new things. And, the, and, the, and the, as you get older, it's very important to retain as many neuro, neurological cells and build those connections as possible that keeps you from aging. And in, in a lot of people's cases, it would keep them from developing um, you know, elderly illnesses of the mind. So it's very important that you read, constantly read, constantly learn, have learning, new learning goals every day. So audible for people that are multitasking, maybe want to drive down the car and be able to pay attention to what's going on and also read at the same time. Audible is the key there, or, or audio books. And you're saying that there's ways out there that do comprehension tests on how fast you read. So actually test yourself so you can get better at reading, is what you're saying. Right. Do your own, do your own comprehension test. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. And it is possible to, you have two parts of your brain, the system one and system two, mm -hmm. and that one is they call it, there was this book by Kahneman, it was Thinking Fast and Slow. Right. But long story short, the things that you do kind of every day are a lot of muscle memory. They don't require you to think a lot about it. So when you're listening to Audible and you're mopping the floor or you're making dinner, I guarantee you, you're gonna absorb that information. Yeah. Versus if you're trying to juggle something new, uh, something a little bit more strenuous, something that you're thinking about, it's gonna be a little bit harder to use something like an audiobook. So I know it's, it might be hard to adjust to audiobooks, mm -hmm. but in this day and age is probably one of the best ways to get literature. Okay, fantastic. Mm -hmm. And always keep growing, learn about new subjects, keep your mind fresh. It's like a good diet. You want to vary that diet so you keep a good healthy mind. So, right. Fantastic, fantastic. Well, good. Um, all right, I want to ask you a couple more things. One of them about leadership. Mm -hmm. What is it speaking about reference materials for leadership? Who are a couple or two or three or four good authors in the leadership fields that you like and why do you like them? Because I think a lot of leaders out there need some pattern and then mm -hmm. there's something to follow, need some references to go by. Who are a couple authors you like, why you like them? What do they tell you? Um, the biggest two, I would say, are John C. Maxwell right. and John Gordon. When I say John C. Maxwell, I think of him with the kind of, I mean, just at the pinnacle of, or the fundamentalist when it comes to, to leadership. He's come with, up with a lot of fundamental ideas and he gives praise to a lot of his uh, the leaders who came before him and helped give him advice, but he, he does a good job with that as well. But as far as putting works together, the 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership is a, is a good read. Um, he has, I think, over 50 titles, something something really, really big. Um, and he's phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Beyond that, uh, John Gordon. So again, if we get back in a, a little bit more casual read, mm -hmm. so John C. Maxwell, you're looking at book lengths of about three, to six hours on average. Right. John Gordon, uh, a little bit more casual read in my opinion, but nonetheless, extremely powerful stories. I mean, these stories you can remember, the energy bus, uh, I think it's on your middle middle school reading list. I think that's the number one uh, book edition. But John Gordon is a, it, it, it's very good. You know, he has testimonies from everything from just generally making people more positive to uh, helping people become better in their marriages, better at work, uh, helping them compete, helping them understand people. Uh, John Gordon is a very good start uh, into leadership. Uh, he doesn't have very many daunting kind of uh, titles or, or literature set out. Okay, fantastic. Now, um, along those lines of leadership, speaking about physical leadership, mm -hmm. uh, we were speaking a little bit about Jim Wall and mm -hmm. Carl Rocky the other day, and, and how they, they came together to help create Project Adventure. Um, you know. Early 70s, that time frame, that's when they came around with that. They did the adventure-based model based on the Outward Bound program. And that was a very interesting way to teach kids. And we have some Outward Bound, outward bound model elements here 
price of vitro ailments. Um, we have six low and six high ailments. So it's kind of neat to see how those leadership monologues and, and, and dialogues have come through uh, the leadership model. And I like that. I like Jim Wall. I like Carl Warnke. I really enjoy that type of leadership. The, the physical, elemental, game playing, kinetic learning models. Uh, I like that with kids. So if you want to really, if you're a teacher and you want to engage children with learning the outdoors, one of the best models you can use is the project adventure adventure based learning model, experiential learning model. That's a great learning model. So look up experiential education, check that out. You know, be a be a big reader in that area. Uh, Wilderdom.com, excellent website, great full of games and activities and tons of different programs you can do with kids. Uh, we really use that a lot over the years. So have fun with that. That's a great read program manager too. So uh, it's just a way to put things into action. So read, have fun out there. Uh, enjoy yourself. The younger you learn how to read, the better off you'll be. Read to your kids. Okay, there's a huge amount of research out there that's connected to the amount of growth that you can have. If you read to a child from the age five and younger versus people that you're reading a lot after age five, they says it's a huge benefit. The earlier you get them to read, the more advanced that they can become as they, as they grow. They grow even faster and faster as they get older. So that part of the developmental cycle of humans is super important from age zero to five and developing good reading habits. Uh, and so that's a big issue. If you get older than that, you can still do it. Just continue to practice, continue to get better uh, and have fun with your kids. So right. Reading is important. Right, in addition, I, just one thing I wanted to add to that is let your kids read something that they'll like. You right. know, so many times we get caught up in these book lists and book suggestions by schools and what is the top book out there. Um, the biggest thing that my parents let me do is mm -hmm. all I cared about when I was a little kid was sharks and dinosaurs. Um, right, that's all. And so when I went to the library, that's all I rented. But, you know, there are some really long named dinosaurs uh, out there. And that actually contributed to having a better vocabulary, learning how to pronounce things better. So they will learn how to read through what they like. Don't force feed books to them. It's okay to make suggestions and um, tr try to get them to do things, certain things new, but if you develop a passion for reading, it won't matter because when they get older, they'll branch out. I used to read nothing but uh, nonfiction science. Now I actually read some horror books and I, then I got into literature and all these other different genres. So it will, it'll change as they get older, but let them read what they want to. Right. And with me, that was very important because uh, the reason why I have this job here is because I read Mass Master Magazine. Mm -hmm. I read about being a biologist and it was a fisheries biologist. So I took my degree in fisheries biology, fisheries and wildlife from Princeton University. I would have never graduated with a four-year degree had I not read those passages in that magazine. So if you're a parent out there and you want to inspire our child to go on to college, maybe go and get a higher education, uh, definitely get them into reading, get them into exploring newer avenues. Uh, you know, there's also read-alongs on YouTube. If you're a single parent or you're having trouble getting out there and having time for your kids like that, we get it. Get out there and let the kids have something they can watch. Watch Sesame Street at home. That's a great way for little kids. There's so many good resources out there. abcmouse.com. There's all these great resources for parents now that, uh, that will assist you if you're really struggling and you're kind of juggling all this, these time constraints. So, but just have fun. Have fun with your kids. Biggest thing is have fun. Make fun a part of a learned skill. So many people, we, put, we think fun is just something that happens spontaneously and all that. You have to make time for fun. You have to make fun a priority. And when you make fun a priority, it brings your family, your community, everything together, and it makes it alive. So fun is really the key a lot of times to success. And when you're having fun, you're learning at your fastest rate. Einstein said that play is the highest form of research. Make time for play. Have fun with your family and your community. Be a good person. And that's, that's really when you're starting to do life enrichment. And you know, if you look back over your life, you're gonna look like over a thousand different experiences, but the things you remember the longest are really those things that you had the most fun experiencing with other people and with the community, those are things that really stand out. Mm -hmm. so, so always make time for fun. That's that fun cannot be stated enough, the importance of fun in education. I think every daggum thing out there, every topic we teach should be made fun to somebody in some level and that will get them intrinsically motivated to get involved with it. So, and that's, there's gotta be, there's gotta be a point to make everything fun with education. Right. Yeah. And so get out there and have fun, go explore, uh, try something new every day, every day, read about something new every day. Enjoy, enjoy. Just enjoy living and enjoy researching. These rainy and cold days are very important for the developmental cycle and love of learning and reading. And that's what we do on some of our days when the kids are here. 
and we take time to kind of talk together and learn together and do our own research. You need some you time. That's really important. Mm -hmm. Anything else you'd like to add? I don't know. That's it. Just go out, grab a book, uh, get that library card, and get down to those books. There you go. Just dive into it. Mm -hmm. And do something with what you learn mm -hmm. and put them into action. All right. So for uh, Play Card Environmental Education Center, this has been Abercrombie. This is William Justin Johnson. I'm glad to, I'm glad to have you. You all stay forever wild. Enjoy these rainy, cool days too. Keep on learning, everybody. <laughs>